Welcome back to the Delaware Way. I'm Larry Menti. How will President Donald Trump's environmental policies affect Delaware? Here to talk about that and someone who's concerned about that is Senator John Kowalko, representative of, of the 25th District. Sir, thank you How so you much. Doing, I appreciate pleasure you to be here back. again. What is, your, what is your main concern? Well, my main concern is the fact that he, uh, Donald Trump and this administration at the federal level has decided to attack all regulations, good and bad, uh, that are now applicable to turning our environment around, the prospects of our environment. His, his cuts to the EPA is, is going to be a draconian uh, measure that will, uh, in effect, negate all of the progress we've made recently to clean up, and especially in Delaware, Delaware waterways. It, uh, de defunding that, that group uh, is what he's doing. He's using uh, not just the anti-regulation uh, message that he's sending, but he's, if he can't get the anti-regulation message across the board, uh, then he's defunding this these agencies. This has been a long battle, what you're talking about. The access yeah. to the Delaware waterways. Mm -hmm. Companies have said for a long time that the regulations are too draconian on their side mm -hmm. and there's been uh, the other side has been saying and they've won the battle now for the last eight years that we have to protect the waterways and, and it, can't there be something in the middle I mean is it possible that these companies were overregulated for the last eight years I, I don't believe that at all that's been the uh clarion call of the Chamber of Commerce that businesses don't want to come here because they're not allowed to pollute. Well, you can see the, what, what the evidence in the Comores. Uh, There's companies that would want to move along the, along the waterfront that necessarily wouldn't be making products that would pollute, correct? They're just well, not even allowed access without a long... Uh, a, 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 a long review process. Right, and the review process is very necessary because a lot of these companies might come in with the uh, uh, saying they're not they're not going to have any products that they're going to uh, release into our waterways. And, and, and truth be told, that has not been the practice in Delaware. Delaware has been a long time supporter of the chemical industry, uh, the the refinery, all of the, uh, the env environmental. Uh, harm that has been done has been because of uh, Delaware's uh, commitment to, uh, to industry, and I don't want to see a rebirth of that because we have, we have a point. Uh, I think it was five years ago. It was uh, you weren't supposed to eat two fish out of Delaware, and then they issued another report. You shouldn't eat one out of in a year. You shouldn't eat one fish in a year. I mean, that, that's a hor horrible uh, legacy to impose upon our environment. It's necessary. It supplies the Delaware River Basin. Is, is the water source for 15 million residents downstream. We had a, a major battle about fracking upstream on the Delaware River Basin, which so far has been held at bay. But uh, I don't think it's a matter of cut and dry. Of, oh, the regulations are, are killing businesses. Businesses are doing quite fine. Using those terms, I think, uh, is sometimes defeats the argument. It's not, they, nobody's talking about being unrestricted, yeah. right? No, you're right. You're right. And I, sometimes, I guess in my passion to, to make the point, I, I, I become counterproductive by I inflammatory message that it's unrestricted and drawing a, a black and white when it really is a gray area to be concerned with. But I don't see that any of the regulations that we had in place and that were being put in place by the EPA had any effect of, of, uh, of denying businesses an opportunity to be successful or had any effect other than to move us forward with cleaning up our waterways, move us forward with cleaning up our air, move us forward with all of these type of things without cause, costing business ventures any kind of thing, except holding them, not holding them responsible, but holding them accountable for anything that may happen untoward to that environment or may contribute to a, a stifling of, of the improvement that we need. If some of these regulations you're talking about are pulled back by the Trump administration, uh, is there something, because you have no say in that except to complain about it, mm -hmm. is there something the state can do to make up for them? Uh, it, it would be uh, t to a certain extent, but it's very costly. And uh, we, uh, the state alone cannot address the problems, even if they were state caused by our acquiescence to, uh, to the industries that allow these, these types of sites to, to uh, percolate. Uh, but the state alone cannot afford to uh, clean these up. If, if the EPA is defunded, uh, we've already had under the uh, George W. Bush administration a, a, a certainty of defunding of the, uh, the Superfund uh, money. The state can't afford that kind of cleanup. The state can't afford that. So can we do something? Yes, we can certainly uh, try to uh, regulate industry, but we already, I've already seen our response to that. That's why we, uh, we allow the, uh, the Coastal Zone Act to be weakened. 
And quite frankly, uh, that, that to me proves that maybe the state isn't ready to accept that responsibility yet. I want to ask you a question on another topic, and it's something we had talked about before we started this interview segment. I know you're a big Bernie Sanders supporter. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about Hillary Clinton's new book where she blamed Bernie Sanders for losing the election. What's your reaction to that? My reaction is that Hillary Clinton could use a, a, a good dose of, of uh, self uh, scrutiny, uh, uh, insight into her own failings, and, and I and I, I posted this uh, in a place, a uh, public place, uh, that Hillary Clinton should look back and reflect on her inability to challenge the ACA as it was written, as it was passed, and say, once I get into office, I'm going to look for a public option or a Medicare for all, some way to to solve and soothe the uh, the, uh, the market excesses uh, that are causing the healthcare costs to go up. Hillary Clinton should have said that uh, I am going to disavow the corporate uh, interests that are supporting me to this extent. They're going to pay their fair share. And she should have said, in spite of the fact that at a late stage, I decided that I would be against the, uh, the I think it was the Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement, TPP, I will make an effort, a concerted effort, to rein in the excesses of the corporations that are willing to locate their workforce there uh, in a foreign country and bring the product back here to sell it. And if she was able to do those things, she could I have inspired have the Bernie Sanders voters who left her. Exactly, exactly. And, and a case in point is, uh, and, uh, and uh, this is one of the points where I d agreed with Donald Trump during our election. In Chicago, they had $95 million that they gave to Nabisco to build a factory about eight years ago. And then at the end of the term of that agreement, Nabisco moved their factory for Oreo cookies down to Mexico. So when Donald Trump, I said it before Donald Trump, but I agree with him, I will never buy another Oreo product because that's a betrayal of taxpayer trust, a betrayal of taxpayer money, and it was only done because it's cheaper and more profitable for a company to move there. Wow. John Kowalko, Trump supporter? <laughs> <laughs> Hardly. <laughs> I'm teasing. Thank you so much. I always appreciate you coming in. Senator John Kowalko, representative of the 25th District. When we come back, we will have a Trump supporter. Rob Arlett, who led the cause for Donald Trump in Delaware when the Delaware Way continues.